I mean, it was, I had written in the script, I just wanted a, a famous musician in that club. And um, it really was, somebody, it was, I think my, you know, it was my first AD, Artist Robinson said, you should hire Curtis. He, he loves doing this stuff. And I was like, you have to send him a do this. <laughs> yeah, and then called his, his agent and then, you know, then talked to, talked to Curtis. And um, he was way up for it. I mean, he, he likes to do comedy and, uh, it was thrilling. I, I honestly I had to pitch myself. I didn't think I could get somebody of his stature for this. And, and, you know, and, and, and what's great is that he just goes for it. I mean, he just you know, he, when he gets knocked down in the movie, that's him. He's like, I don't do stunt double. He had a stunt double. He's like, I'll just do it myself. So he, he went down before, <laughs> no padding or anything. He's a, he's a rock star. So he, on set, does he go by Curtis or Fifty Cent? I whatever he wants. I always call him Curtis just because you're weird calling him Fifty Cent. <laughs> but uh, people call him a lot of. I, I think most people call him Fifty or Fifty. Exactly. <laughs> See, that's my mom first, because it just sounds so weird. You know, right? So, yeah. can, can you, you talk about working with Melissa McCarthy and how that's changed over the, the process of doing all these films together? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, it actually hasn't changed at all. Our process has kind of remained the same. We just, you know, we, we were friends, and we, you know, we weren't. I didn't know her when we first did Bridesmaid. We became friends pretty quickly, and then we lived in the same neighborhood. We see each other all the time. But so, I mean, if anything, we've just learned to trust each other even more. Um, you know, because I'll. I'll ask for things that, to her, sound like too big, but then I know she's so good at grounding things that I can push her, and then same same with me. She also want to push things in a, in a different way or try to ground things or like this. It, it, you know, we're always trying to find that mix between what plays real, what what makes the character real, but can also make them funny. And, but we're very much in lockstep on what we don't want, which is we never want the any character she plays to be stupid or incompetent, you know, that, that she's earnestly good at stuff, and, you know, and it's just how she's figuring out how to do it is where the comedy comes from. So can you talk a little bit about what it's like to work on this movie and the Peanuts movie at the same time, yeah. and kind of compare and contrast the comedy style and yeah, style? Hard R versus G <laughs> movie. Uh, it, it, it's actually, what, what's great about animation is it's so compartmentalized <clears throat> that, um, you know, you kind of, set things in motion then you go away and they're, they're doing doing things so, so you have these teams of people that are, that are working at this and Steve Martino who, who's directing Peanuts is just so masterful at what he's doing and guiding his team and, and you know just everything from casting the kids voices and all that so I just I'm kind of in there just making sure it's all you know tonally staying right but I don't have to it, it's everyone's so so committed to doing it the same way and wanting it to have the, the, the feel that it's true to the original that um, you know it, it's there's not a lot that you have to fight with people and, about. and one more follow up about the peanuts because i love the trailer yeah. and originally i was concerned that the whole 3d animation would ruin, would ruin it yeah. but yeah. how do you well, i'll get a pass i'm a rapper yeah. <laughs> so, so how do you how do you balance modern sensibilities with people like me who are curious and like the yeah. hand drawn well, old when school? it first got announced everyone was very nervous we're talking about no, I'm talking about another movie. Now. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Big time. Well, that's about me and you, friends. See, that's me and that's all. We're close friends now. Yep, exactly. We're going to be working with Paul, even for me, <clears throat> I'm moving the light. Very <laughs> He has no ego. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was just, yeah, everybody was worried about that, uh, as was I. But the first time I went in, they presented me their artwork that they were doing. They are so true to Charles Schultz's pen lines and everything. I mean, Steve Martino has broken it down and they, they trained everybody. So I don't know if you've seen, you know, yeah, you saw the, yeah, the teaser. It's very... It, 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 it surprisingly wants that balance of yeah. modernizing the animation style while keeping the tone yeah. and comedy pure. Yeah, it's really exciting. They, they really just made sure to make it feel, so you would never feel bumped like that. Paul, talking about honoring source material, I, I just have to ask, you know, is it tricky to you know, uh, to, to kind of satisfy all those Ghostbusters fans, you know, yeah. the, the whole world, while at the same time, you know, creating the fresh atmosphere that your comedy, you know, that spontaneous comedy you always bring. Yeah, you know, I mean, who knows? We, we just, you know, we're, we're I'm just trying to make it a funny movie. I love the original one. We're doing enough nods to the original that uh, people will feel, you know, feel it, like... Is um, 50 going to take on the Bobby Brown role? Oh, oh no, it's my prerogative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the answer is clear. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask you about the uh, the girls last night. They were hilarious. Can you tell me their, their names at the, the dinner last night? They just stole the show. Well, yeah, the, the characters are Gina and Beth, but they're played by Jamie Dembo and Jessica Chaffin. Okay, are you going to do a movie with them? We, uh, we have them. We actually have, after the heat, 
we uh, made a deal to have make them have have their own, mo own movie. And we've actually written it. It's hilarious. Yeah. So we'll be going in production of that pretty soon. Okay, great. But they are they are rock stars. And one of less. Are you going to do a movie with Fifty? <laughs> I would be love to do another movie with Fifty. You kidding me? All right. We had so much fun. He's like, the man. Yeah. Man, who knew he was so funny? That's the thing. The experience is just, just amazing. Like, you know, we got out there. You get to Budapest, you'll, you'll run out of things to do. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, well, so what are we doing, Paul? <laughs> you came up with stuff on the spot. Like, this different. A lot of times, you're in that with, well, I think it's a different thing completely when it's comedy. You know, the instincts of the director, it's everything. It's how it all pulls together. Even with the, the talent having a, a natural instinct to go places, you got to have the instinct to allow it to do that at points. Well, that's what makes the film great, man. Right? Well, and he trusted us, and you know, we give him crazy lines, and he would just yeah. commit to so <laughs> hard. Say it like this. Yeah. <laughs> the he spoke uh, Hungarian, though. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hajraj, or was that it? Yeah. yeah. Hajraj. And, and, and actually, this question is for 50 as a follow up. You, you do a lot of, I don't want to denigrate it by saying straight to video, but you do a lot of independent straight to video movies, but you're always serious in those. I actually How difficult those films, was it? And I raised the money for them. I have two hundred million dollars. We broke them into ten pictures. I sold Domestic Race and Lionsgate, and those films that you see that you feel like are just going straight to DVD and Redbox mm -hmm. or, or on actual air in different territories. So you can't limit how how you approach the film business. Mm -hmm. You can't look at it and go Hollywood is always hurry up and wait. Mm -hmm. Hurry up! You're prepared now. Wait. Mm -hmm. Someone about decides that you're good or that you you've worked so. to a point that you're seasoned, and I decided I'm going to make the those things happen without deteriorating or just or just allowing my music career to go away. And the way to do that is through the finance. When I say that it's green lit and the film's gonna take place is when it's gonna take place. And I've done a lot of my actual preparing for the things that you see me doing now on film. And what do you find harder, film or music? I'm more conditioned for music. I've been doing full time since 97. It's easy for me. The, the, the whole concept of writing a song is fun and it's faster than what you would do during the film process. Like, I've watched Paul have five and six variations for every scene. <laughs> so it's like, God damn, what would the movie be if you didn't show up? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's coming out of his head that quick, wait. <laughs> With a pad, do it like this. <laughs> Say it like this. And then at the end, it's, it's like, now let me look at all my ideas, because it's a collage of all the things that we came up with, and then Cutting it down. We should talk about how long the film is initially after you yeah. put it together, and then when you bring it to. Oh yeah, I mean the first cut's usually about three hours. Long. See, yeah, that and process then, is amazing. Yeah, crush and, it down. Right? And you're used to being in control. What's it like to kind of give it up and kind of just trust Paul a bit? It takes a lot of the pressure off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm in good hands. I know. Uh, I know. I'm around, surrounded by, it. and then and going into comedy, just just going into being a part of a comedy project, it's important that it's the right project, you know, and then when, when, when the audience sees my face for the very first time, they go, oh, shit, look at that. <laughs> 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 you the right motherfucking people. How that happen? <laughs> <laughs> Who set this shit up? <laughs> Speaking of doing more films together, is there a Spy 2 in the works? Uh, yeah, I'm writing it right now, yeah. So, uh, you know, we'll see how Spy 1 does at the box office, but, uh, you know, we're, we're cautiously optimistic. Uh, yeah, I'd love to do another one. Yeah, it, it's having... I love that world and I love the spy genre it just allows you to do so many things and go to so many locales and, and that's just what's so exciting to me about it. So. And he's conservative. This shit is a hit. <laughs> I can feel it. I know when it's happening. Curtis, oh, you're not <laughs> Paul, were you a James Bond fan growing up? And if so, did you have any favorites? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love the James Bond movies, but I especially love the books. Okay. Uh, and so. Honestly, I mean, I, yeah, I love I love you know the early ones especially, but I saw them all the Roger Moore ones. I was actually kind of when I was a kid, the Roger Moore ones were the ones that were always coming out. But it wasn't until honestly until Casino Royale and, and Daniel Craig that I really got back into them because that's so true to the Fleming books, and, and I just like that tone. And honestly, that's that to me was like I, like, I want to make a funny version of that. So Paul, we mentioned a couple of your future projects. You have a lot of your plays. Uh, and you've seen in the past few years how you emerged one of the wake up stars in Hollywood. Not even, we've been around, we've been on for a while, but now in the recent years with Fox, with your affiliation with these movies, and of course with Melissa, both of you, you know, um, you're not 
the newcomers. Right. Why do you attribute that to? Um, I just I love making movies, and, and I'm finally kind of you know I spent my whole career trying to get to a point where I could actually be allowed to make them, you know. And, and I had a had a misstep early in my career. Where I had two movies that didn't do well, and it kind of took me out of the business as far as the movie business. So I very happily went into TV directing and stayed in there. And was lucky enough to work on some of the best shows, you know, on television, Arrested Development, The Office, Lynch Jackie, Mad Men, all that stuff. Yeah. Sabrina, <laughs> well, yeah, that was my that was my acting career. Yes, yeah, so fortunately, I got out of that. But but that, so then when Bridesmaids was a hit and then the, the heat took off, you know, I'm finally in a position where I can actually, even though it is, you're right, it's all out of hurry up away. Yeah. But you know, at least I can kind of get these projects going now. And so I love working with funny women, and I want to keep doing that. And so what's really fun to do is just go into different genres and, and try to reinvent the genre. And, that way, and, and I just have so much fun because you know, my favorite director is Howard Hawks. And if you look at him, I mean, gangster movie, and a comedy, but, you know, Western, you know, all these different things, and it's just it's too much fun as a director to be able to try things, and, and I just love it. Could you talk about Melissa's past few years? Oh my God, I mean, she's it. just you know superstar. And what's great is just that you know she's got this TV show, which is great because it actually you know gives her an anchor of things she does, and so she's not doing so many movies that there's a chance for her to get overexposed in that way. And she's really smart about making projects. You, you seem to corner the market on funny women. Um, how, do, how do you as a man, how, how do you um, know how to speak for women and write in such a great voice? I mean, it just it comes naturally just because I think most of my friends throughout my life have been women. Um, I was, was kind of, you know, the comedy of men can be very aggressive sometimes, and I'm, I'm sort of a more of a feminized guy in a weird way. I, I was bullied as a kid and stuff, and so I always tend to like things that aren't so mean-spirited. We can have fun with it in that world, but I, I just like the comedy of, of, of funny women that way. And also just this feeling of like, I know so many funny women over the course of my career who I would just see getting terrible roles in movies and not, you know, not big roles and also not allowing them to be funny and to bring their skills. And so I thought, that, it just drove me crazy. And you know, the guys are fine. All the funny guys are fine. They're working, they're doing their thing. But like all these funny women, it just, I wish I could do more movies because there's so many women that I can't put in my movies yet. But uh, hopefully they'll just keep expanding. And doing what doing. This one is for both of you. I want to know what was the point in your life that you said, I have to direct, I have to rap. What, what, what made that happen for you? Well, um, for me, I mean, it was the, the, the creative outlet, it was something I could be passionate about. And I think that that's really the, uh, the steps. When you find something that you're passionate about, you can do it enough to be good enough. You know, I have what you're actually doing. And, and music took off and it opened up all kind of doors for me. Like, and then when you have a, a, a strong presence on one portion of entertainment, music is entertainment. If you go on vacation right now, it all be some sort of film, television, and music involved in the relaxation. And what happens to me is because I'm conditioned for music, it's so easy that I go to the other vices faster. Yeah. And then you look and you find things in moments and things, and you go, this is amazing. Like, I wish I could do that or be a part of that. And then as, a, uh, as the opportunities grow, which you be more seasoned or more involved in it, is, uh, it's excitement because it's, it's endless, like where you can actually go with it, you know, from my perspective. And then you see the likes of the people that I've had the opportunity to rub elbows with that I think definitely give you a confirmation of what I'm saying, like, where you can get with it. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I, I agree. It's like, it's kind of a kid in the candy store as the syndrome that happens because as you start going forward, things are going well. It's like all the things you kind of want to do, you want to make sure you don't overextend yourself. Right. But you, you want to make sure you're good at everything. But, um, I mean, for me, getting into directing, I was, I was an actor for a long time. I was a stand-up comedian, and every all of that was fun and it trained me. But I also realized I was limited because I only had myself, right. you know, the one vessel that you go through. Versus, I go, oh, if I'm directing, I can harness all the talents of all these really great people and find a way to make them better, and that's much more satisfying to me than just kind of me doing a role and being limited by. You know, I was not that good of an actor. So. <laughs> I wasn't going to wear this vest, but I know Paul was going to be here. Come on. <laughs> so there we go, huh? So you got to get clean when you know your director's already going to get the best dress award. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to ask, how did you get into directing? 
get the nickname 50 Cents? Uh, it was given to me a long time ago from childhood stuff. I, uh, I don't want to play the video game one time. I want to play it twice. I need 50 Cents. Oh, <laughs> great story. <laughs> Paul, you've made a point of saying this is not a spoof of spy movies. How do you walk that line of making it a comedy and poking fun at the genre but not making it a spoof? Well, my problem with the spoof is that <clears throat> there's no stakes in the spoof. Uh, it's, just, it's just like a joke fest, and so it requires everybody to be kind of silly. And um, I, I, I don't know how to tell a story that way, because I need people to be engaged in the characters and caring about the characters. And so what you do is you just set up, you know, I wrote it like a real spy movie. It had the twists and turns that we normally have, and then made the comedy not about like, oh, look, the villain's goofy. It's like, it's more about... You know, here's a person who's never done it before. She's in love with this guy, and then she has to go out. She thinks she can do it. So it, it, it's my kind of comedy, which is all behavioral. It's about people bumping up against each other, trying to figure things out, trying to be good at it, having to course adjust, they screw up, but never being stupid. Mm. I mean, you know, like a, the perfect example is that when she takes off of that scooter and falls over. We had written that just because that would be really funny, but then I thought, Okay, she's going to be incompetent. Like, she's not just an idiot who would jump on a scooter and fall over. So I was like, how can I make that work in the real world? It's like, oh, I've been in Europe. They have these scooters with this roof oh, on the top. Yeah. yeah. So you go, like, if you get on there, you've never been on one of those. I bet they're weird and they're probably top heavy. <laughs> so she fell over. She's like, okay, she's not an idiot. She made a mistake. She grabbed the wrong scooter. Then she gets on the good one and then she goes. Go and so, yeah. So that's, it, it's a way to, you know, keep, keep that danger. Because if, if you're going like, oh my God, she could have killed, it, that, then, then you're going to invest in the movie. And if not, then you're just going joke to If the person is really into action films, they'll enjoy it. If this is typically where you would see the spy film, the spy theme. If you're into love stories, you'll love it because this really was driving Melissa's character. And there's so many different underlying themes connected to it that I was blown away by. It's really smart. The way it was written was. Done. Like this, why I was like, yeah, I'll be in it. If I got to be in the back carrying a light. <laughs> and Hell just, yeah. and and some of the biggest laughs in the movie. Too. Just the, uh, I respect the fact you said you know you going away from music because it's starting to get easy, but not still doing it. But you're getting yourself more involved in film. And I know you've done some directing, but do you see yourself eventually getting more in that director's chair? Because you've already produced, you're starting to act. Do you want to direct more? Do you want to get more I, I involved? Do. I, I like it. I think when you get a chance, to, I've done it one time in a very small film. Before I self destruct. Before I self destruct. Before I self destruct. And it, it gave me a better understanding of everything else that's going on. Probably because the director is pretty much aware of everything that's actually happening. Like from the, the script, any changes that's happening at that point, and then just the production where you're at. Mm -hmm. The movements is that he's on, got to keep his finger on the pulse of what's going on. And if you don't actually have, you ain't Paul, <laughs> if you don't have the budget. <laughs> You better really pay close attention <laughs> to what's right. going on. <laughs> so, yeah. What do you have next for Cheetah Vision? <laughs> what do you have next coming up with Cheetah, from Cheetah Vision uh, on, in film and television? Well, I, I have um, some new projects that I'm developing now, but I'm not, they may not necessarily go through Cheetah Vision okay. because I've had a different response. Following you know, my participation in Spy and uh, new, new Southport film, mm -hmm. yeah. which releases uh, July 24th. Yeah. Myself, Jake Gyllenhaal, um, Directed by Antoine Foucault. Uh, and I've, I've always wanted to ask, which do you prefer, 50, 50, or credits? Whichever one you come for. <laughs> <laughs>